guys. Uh, I'm Rodney Keaton. I'm the youth minister at Central Church of Christ here in Huntsville. Uh, right now I'm in the Davidson Center at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, and I'm standing uh, behind the Saturn V rocket, um, which is one of the technological marvels uh, of the modern world. Um, most of us know uh, that this rocket took Apollo astronauts to the moon, um, and you may know names like Neil Armstrong, uh, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, uh, all of these men uh, were on a rocket just like this. Um, but you may not know the names of the other 10 guys that walked on the moon. Um, the cool thing about this rocket is it is a what they call an engineering equivalent, uh, which means when they built the rocket that would go to the moon, they built two, and they built this one first. Now this one was designed to make sure that all the bolts and all the parts and all the panels were in the right places, everything fit together just like it was supposed to, so that when they finished it and they tested it, they knew it worked. And once they did that, they built the one that went to the moon. Um, so actually, this is the first rocket uh, that they built, the first fully functional rocket. Now, obviously, they did tests and all kinds of things, but in addition to those 10 men, uh, those 12 men that went and walked on the moon, what you may not realize is that to do this, it took over 400,000 men and women to make this Apollo program happen. We're talking engineers, designers, people to build the panels, to do the bolts, to, to crunch the numbers. Um, there's all kinds of people that it took to make this happen. Before this, people would look up to the moon and wonder what it would take to get there, how it would happen. And now years and years and decades later, we know it takes a ton of people and a ton of time and a ton of energy to get it done. But at the time, these men, these women, they took it one step at a time and they took something that seemed impossible and they put it within reach. Um, when we look in God's word, it's no different. Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter 19 is talking to a bunch of people about what it takes to get to the kingdom of heaven, what it takes to be in the realm of God, in the relationship with Jesus. And he says, look, to get to heaven, it, it, it takes selling all your possessions. It takes serving God with all your heart. And at one point he says, it would be easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it would be for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of heaven. And he even acknowledges, look, this is impossible. But then he gives us hope. He says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. If you go on and read later, guys like Paul who are wrestling with this idea. In 1 Corinthians, he talks about the people that he converted. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, look, I, I converted this guy, I converted that guy, but I don't remember everyone else. Now, at first glance, that sounds kind of cocky or maybe kind of rude that he doesn't remember all the people that he converted. But what he's trying to get at is that it's not about him. And if you read further on in chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, he says, look, Apollos watered... Uh, I planted a seed, but God is the one that provided the growth. God is the one that made this possible. It's about God. It's not about me. When these rockets were built, when this, this all took place in the 60s and the 70s, it was just an idea. It was a dream. But a guy like Neil Armstrong, a guy like Buzz Aldrin, they weren't able to do this by themselves. It wasn't anywhere within reach. It was impossible. But 400,000 men and women countless hours later, countless years later, Neil Armstrong put his feet on the moon and we achieved something that up until then seemed impossible. And so my prayer for you when it comes to service, when it comes to reaching out to other people, when it comes to relationship with God, I pray that you understand that even if you're not the one putting your feet on the moon, if you're just the guy with the dream, if you're the person behind the scenes crunching numbers, that something this big could not have been done without each and every person involved. And God wants you, no matter where you're involved, no matter how small you think your contribution is, God is looking to you to do your part. And the fact that you are part of that means that you have a place in his kingdom. Just like the men and women who put their stamp on this rocket have a place in history for all time. There's an entire museum devoted to all these men and women, not just the ones that put their feet on the moon. And so I pray that you will be a part of God's work, that you will 
find joy in it, that you will work with all your heart, and that when, when it comes down to it, you'll give glory to God, that you will guide other people into acts of service, into moments of ministry, that you can say, look, this is about God. This is about something bigger. This is about his kingdom, and it's not about me. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.